Hello and welcome to another Demis Helen tutorial. We're going to be looking at multiband compression and we're going to be using a lead for the example. Um, so as you know that people are wanting loudness and usually they're just going to go, right, we'll turn up the volume or put something on like a, a compressor and just turn the gain up, put a limiter on it, make sure it's not clipping, you've got your loudness. Now there's a little bit more to it than that. You can do that and you're just going to get that generic flat equal wave sound but if you want a bit of dynamic in there we could use some new york compression types which is where we use this mix knob up here and we can mix some of the dynamic um, back into the process signal so we get best of both worlds um, and i think dance music may not have that in as much as it should uh, in my opinion uh, we go for this hard straight to the grid sound kick clap kick clap um, and I think there's there's room for a lot more humanization in stuff like this so this is just uh, approaching that kind of scenario where you want your track to stand out a little bit more and just have more dynamic so the multi band compressor just works as a normal compressor but you're controlling up to four bands in this case and um, you can control just one up to four and what this does is give you the ability to have these four sections up here compressed using these repeated sections here. So if we just have a quick overview, if we set this to one band, we have one band up here and that is corresponding to this first one here. Now this first one, we have the top section where you can load some presets. Uh, we have the mix knob, so we have independent mix knobs on each section. Um, and then we have the threshold, so we can see our gain reduction happening here. Uh, we have the compressor here, so we have the ratio, the attack, the release, some boosting, and the hard and soft knee. The limiter gives you control over adding some volume without any clipping, and then we have at the bottom the scope of how the sound's changed, uh, indicated by brighter green, so it shows you what you've added in and how much louder it's got. Um, gain reduction, so you can see a live gain reduction, you can zoom that in and out. And then we have the DPC here, which we can load in some presets to accentuate um, kick drums and uh, snares, etc. And I don't tend to use these too much, but I'll show you what they do anyway on this sound. We could use some cool presets on there. And then we have the settings down here, so we can affect how the how fast the pattern is, so 1 over 8, 1 over 4, 1 over 16. They're the three we have. We can have it double the pace, and we can have the pre-limiter on, and we can flip that round. So we'll go into that in a bit more detail, and that's the same for each of the four bands. They're all identical in every way. Uh, up at the top, we have the mix knob, so we can mix dry signal back into processed, New York compression. Um, so we'll set it back to four bands. The only other thing that you need to think about is the input and the output. And we'll just monitor the output there. So we have this synth. Now this synth is already pre-done uh, pre from the last video, which was the Psytrance build. And on here, we have the main lead already done. And then I've sent it into a bus for the leads. So this is where I'll send all of my leads to be mixed together nicely and make them all blend. So for now, we're just gonna focus on one lead sound and through this multiband compressor. So I wanna focus on these two top ends. I'm not too bothered about the bottom and the low mids at the moment. I wanna get some more loudness and more detail out of the top. So in a compressor, you'd use the ratio and the threshold to squash the peaks and obviously let all the sounds below become apparent and you can hear them better. Um, so that's just in a nutshell. So we're gonna do that now. Uh, let's solo these two bands. So we can only hear there. I want to control a little bit more there. And let the highs really just be highs. Okay, so I've narrowed, uh, I've expanded my band here for this channel, which is the third one along. Um, I'm now going to set the ratio 2 to 1, which is about right there. And then we're going to adjust the threshold to taste. We're going to keep it on hard knee. And because it's quite a fast sharp sound we're going to use a fast attack and um, we're going to use a fairly fast release and then we'll keep that on hard knee like i said so let's just listen to what's happening so 
I'm going to have it about there. That sounds okay. So you can see here as I've if I turn that off, you can see the signal's gone back to where it was. Light green is indicating how much we've added, how much we've kind of essentially boosted. Um, and we're going to do the same now for the uppers. Well, the highs, should we say. So two to one. It's just a good starting point, keeping it simple. Very sharp. Keep it on there and then adjust. So suddenly we've added brightness, but without actually EQing anything. We haven't touched anything. We haven't boosted the EQ here. We've done nothing. So that's just using compression. So I like it about there. Um, and then we can mix the dry signal back in. Um, that's where I like it, about there. We'll probably look at some presets uh, maybe later. Maybe on the lower end, I'll just use a preset just to show you what it does. Um, so let's listen to that in context. So that's the full process signal. That's the original. So now I want to add some volume in there. And as you can see here, we've got quite a lot of room. So we're going to use the limiter here and the release we're going to leave where it is and we're just going to boost these volumes to taste on both channels. And we're going to leave a bit of headroom there because we're going to process these lower mids. I'm probably not going to bother with the bases at all. I'll just turn them off and leave it about there. So we're only dealing with three bands so we could have essentially set that to three but I like to see that I've cut it out entirely okay so that's just looking briefly into quickly processing the signal there there's no presets at all that is just by ear and making things sound a little nicer in context with the track it might not sound right yet um, but as a standalone it sounds good so we'll do a bit more processing then we'll look at the track in full so let's use a preset on here so this is the lower mids, so we'll use a mid, and we'll do mid-medium. Let's see what that sounds like. So let's just into that off. So that's gave it some real depth, and uh, added some weight in. So all that's done is put a ratio of four to one, uh, with a slower, well, a medium attack, a medium release, it's kept on the uh, the hard knee, and then they've just attenuated the threshold to taste. So I can put it back to normal with no threshold. So obviously mid-hard would be here. Mid-medium. So I'm going to have mid-medium and soft, just to be awkward. And what that's doing is boosting this here, um, again, without using the use of EQ, just making it more prominent. Um, they've turned the limiter off there, so I'm going to just turn that back on. I'm just going to use it to control the volume. And what you can use this here for as well, you can match them so they're all identical, uh, if you know what I mean. So the volume is the same. Just turn that one down. So you can make a more uniform sound, uh, but that's not what I'm aiming for. I want a bit of detail. And that's using the preset for the whole compression section. Now we're gonna use the upper mids and we're gonna look at the DPC. Um, so we'll solo it, that's the sound we're dealing with. Now I'm going to load in a preset, so we'll go to the grooves and we'll go to complexer. Let's see what it sounds like. So that's loaded in a envelope shape, as you can see it's quite complex. And it's running at 1 16th, so I'm going to run it at 1 8 so we can hear its effects better. And we're going to turn up the strength. So you can hear it down, down, or up. Slow it down even more. And it gives a nice psychedelic effect. So let's just turn the strength down. 
sounds quite interesting. And then we'll load another one in on the highs here. And we'll look, keep that on 16th. And we'll go to grooves again. Let's put on... Classic Gator. Let's just hear what that sounds like in context. Just turn the volume down on the limiter to compensate for that extra. Okay, so let's just listen to where we've got so far. So let's turn the mix off. <coughs> and then let's turn the mix back up. So we've got this really full sound and we haven't actually increased the volume apart from just these sections here and it's only very slightly like we've got a plus three gain there and a plus four gain there that's it that's the only gain we've done uh, what we've done is creatively used compression on individual bands to create the illusion of it being turned up but what you're doing is you're turning up the independent frequencies to where you need them to be and you can tailor this bit up here to where you need it to be and we've still got headroom not much but we've still got that bit of headroom so let's just have a look at the output of here it's not too bad um, now we'll just change this to the volume of the track let's just uh, unsolo everything zoom out and find out where we are there we are So let's just listen to where we were before that. Let's just go back to the bus and turn it off. If my mouse will let me do this. That's where we were before. And I honestly can't understand why we were at that volume. It was slightly louder because we turned it down there. So now you can see how I'm going to do that with the bass line and I'll be able to show you how that does it. Um, but we're just going to stick to the leads because I don't want to confuse things too much. Um, so yeah, if you have the understanding of compression, you're going to understand how to use a multiband compressor. It's all about tailoring the sound to how you want. There's no limit to how you use it, but don't just go crazy and stick it on and I'll, I'll show you an example. You can't just get this go on to the output channel of the whole track, put on a Vengeance multiband, and then go to a full all mastering preset and go Transmaster 1. Because it's it's there to an idea of where a starting point for trance is, but it doesn't mean it's going to work for your track. So let's just take a listen to how that sounds before. And then after. It's too high up. It is boosting those mids and it's giving that classic kind of trance vibe, um, but it's not great. Let's just flick through the other three presets. More at the bass. More at the upper mids. And then we're off the... There is no trance presets after that. Um, so you can do that, but it, it just sounds bloody awful. You've got to really mix it in how you want. So if you use Transmaster 2, here's the original. You could mix in about 70 odd percent of it. Sounds good. But you've got to make sure that your sound is set up ready to go through that. You could put it individually on buses, I suppose, but you're controlling everything in one go and... I don't tend to like putting a multiband compressor on an entire track. Um, now, if you're using it liberally, and if you're using it, uh, so you're not actually using it liberally, so we say we're just adding that little bit in, so like 12%. Makes all the difference. But you've got to understand what's happening to the track after. So you've got to, I would put on an EQ after it, and I would check what it's done to the sound, because it might not be where you want to go, it might be putting way too much bass in there, you could control it all back down, um, but I tend not to do that, so that's just the end of that story. Um, let's just go on there, mute that down, and we'll go back to this one. So in a nutshell, 
this is working as a four band compressor um, and it can be used for the leads, for basses, um, for limiting purposes. Um, it's, it's a deeper topic that really. Um, we've got some preset artists there. But the other thing that it can be used is to make a kick sound huge. Um, so I could quickly demonstrate that. I want to keep it to the lead. I've kind of done the lead tutorial, but this is a little bit of bonus content. Hey, it's Christmas. Let's do it. Um, so let's find the kick. All right, I've had to reload another kick in, so the kick is different from the last video. Uh, I had a plug-in problem, and I just can't be bothered finding the original preset, so I'm going to re redo the kick. All right, so multiband compressor. We're going to go to DPC and we're going to go to Kick Accentuator. So you can hear it's focusing on this lower end here and maybe adding a bit of the click. Um, let's listen to some more. Awful. That's quite nice. A bit too much. So you've got all different things. We could use that. Add a bit more click back in there. Get a bit of that in there. And then you could shape it after. So you've you've got those sort of things. It's great for putting snares in for more dramatic music. So say like you're doing an EDM track, if you want that snare to sound absolutely fat as hell, you could put it through something like that. Use some of the presets, learn how they're working, and then develop your own and create your own sound. So it's got a multiple use. Uh, within a track you can use it on vocals as well you can actually make them glassy and whispery um, obviously with the style in mind in the beginning um, but yeah that is the multiband compressor in a little bit of detail if you wanted to see a little bit more on multiband compression and how I'm using it in certain areas um, just let me know in the comments and I'll go through something maybe in a little bit more depth on maybe just certain bands and what it's actually doing to the certain bands. It's whatever you uh, want to see. Um, so thank you for watching the video. Um, find me in the usual places, Facebook, Instagram, and here. If you want any video requests or preset downloads, head over to my Facebook page. Um, you can click the free downloads button on the left-hand side. Um, and in the new year, there'll be some new things happening. Uh, I'm going to make some studio improvements to just help the kind of the sound of my voice be a little bit clearer. It's a bit of echoey in here at the moment, so I'm going to be kitting it out a little bit more. Um, also, going to be making some changes to how the microphone is placed, so you'll get some better quality videos. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, um, I will have a Patreon page set up as well to kind of get you guys if you want to actually donate uh, money to help the production value of the videos increase uh, stuff like that will help me out um, and I'll be able to buy new plugins and stuff here and there and start doing some more reviews on a wider topic should we say uh, there's a few things I want to get out there but family and just general life gets in the way sometimes so yeah if I can start making money from this um, whether it's through Patreon or through the Google Ads, that's going to help a lot and it's going to be able to show you guys a lot more and hopefully be able to start doing giveaways and stuff like that, actually give some presets away and plugins and all that. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Merry Christmas.